We are live. Hockey Nation fans, welcome back to the Hockey Nation live show with your host, Colt Frenchie in the booth. And we have our co-host, Eric Lay from the West Coast, California, Michael DeVellano. Welcome back, Michael, this morning. Good morning, Pierre. How are you? It's a winter time in uh, Florida. It's 62 this morning. So it's, wow. it's cold right now, but uh, we'll be 85 in a few minutes. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, we have a couple of news around the league this, today. And uh, today we have fini we finished the 31 and 31 with the last team, the Vegas Golden Knight today preview for upcoming season 2020 uh, 2020 and 2021 so it'll be very interesting about to see what the Vegas has for the upcoming season I can wait to have you uh, your highlights about the Vegas yeah and uh, but we have to start with a um, breaking news directly from the Quebec major um, hockey junior league they can sell um, this month of hockey for all the all the teams and they're going to um they are going in quarantine but for one month so um they stop to play uh today until january uh 3rd i believe so they are coming back in january see what happening with the league around you know with the situation with covid or uh, covid around a lot of you know and canada works by um code colors like a uh, red yellow and a green so uh, they are on the red many plays around and uh, they can sell now for the for the next four or five weeks so we'll see what happening after that phase number two and when they're going to restart where many leagues going to be the same both honestly around uh, whatever is usa and canada so uh, really interesting to see the chl situation you know for the upcoming season um same thing with you know Pierre Lebrun re, re, uh, report yesterday uh, still discussion between the NHL and the NHLPA you know what if one thing you you mentioned yesterday and we talked about this where was that great menu you know the the old players not worry about that right it's the youngest players he they said they have like some you know discussion between both of the groups where the youngest want to play and the olders the oldest they don't want to push hard on that one over there so um they that, don't. you know what i mean that's something happening around the league where the but again they have a they have hope they would be back at the beginning of the generate they expect now to maybe cut the train cam um the longevity of the cam at maybe like you know 10 to 12 days before the season start what my my concerns more about me for about the holidays you know what i mean like i don't see any anybody is going to be on a train camp the 23rd and then come back the 26 27 right away you know what i mean they are you know already how this works and then np nhl pa they got like you know vacation last year about that part of everything like that so we'll see everything about um <clears throat> The situation with the, the NHLPA and the NHL for the upcoming season. If, if you that today, I want to talk about this. If I was going to ask you about, we have a Canadian division. What you standing at the end of the sixty game? Well, realistically, Toronto's first. Okay. Um, I would think Vancouver and Winnipeg would kind of be the next two. Probably Montreal. Who am I missing? Ottawa is last. And then you got Calgary and Edmonton, right? Yep. So Calgary and Edmonton. I I think, okay, so I, I think you've probably got Toronto, Edmonton, I, I want to say Winnipeg, but there's some problems with that team for me. Um, I'm trying to think if Calgary is better than Edmonton at, or better than Winnipeg at this point and Vancouver. 
I feel like Vancouver got weaker. <laughs> so I, I got to say, you know, Calgary, Winnipeg, Vancouver, obviously then it's Montreal, Ottawa. And I know, I know Montreal made a bunch of changes. So maybe that's underestimating what they've done because they have brought in Josh Anderson, assuming he's healthy, then that'll help. And they brought in to Foley. So I, I suppose that'll help offensively. It'd be competitive aside from Ottawa, like even Ottawa will scrap it, but I think, you know, Montreal might surprise us, but that's kind of what I think. I think it'll be Toronto, Edmonton, Calgary, Winnipeg, Vancouver, and any of those could switch that little bunch there after Toronto, um, Montreal, Ottawa. Am I missing anybody? No. Okay. Um, what they have like 15 people did that and, um, and the hockey and then the most of them, they pick Toronto. I mean, it's really hard during the regular season to believe that's not going to be the top team. They're very deep <laughs> and they have lots of talent and lots of firepower. Now, what's weird is their numbers last year were junk compared to the prior years. But I think that, you know, they've made a lot of moves. It's really hard to believe they're not going to be up there. Playoffs, who knows, but. Now, the second thing they was said, they are all agree for Ottawa finish last. Yeah, that feels like they're ways away. Like, there's just too many third liners playing second line minutes. Then they have a parity between... It's funny, they put a lot Calgary high. Well, Calgary got Markstrom and Tenev. Did they do anything on forward? Calgary? Um, let's look what they did again. Boston, there's Calgary. So if you look at Calgary, they lost Brody. They gained Markstrom. They lost Brody. They gained Tenev. They have Valamaki coming in. I mean, they didn't make a lot of moves, really. They kept their guys. The defense is, you know, probably about the same because they lost Brody and gained Tanev, but they're bad. They're way better in goal. I mean, the goaltending for them could be the difference because they're very, they're pretty deep. As long as you don't believe that. I think Goudreau is going to bounce back. Absolutely. Monaghan bounce back. Absolutely. Lynn Holmes real good. You know, if, as long as you believe, I think Kachuk runs a whole line. So there you got a second line with Mangiapane and Backlin. Yeah. I got to think that Calgary is up there. I think Edmonton's going to be better than Calgary though. Edmonton's got way too much going on. Um, you know, they have a parity, like, you know, like on the fifth thing, some would put Edmonton, Montreal, Vancouver, Winnipeg, like he can switch everybody from the five team I just mentioned to you, the four teams, and they can be third, four, five, and six, and then you can do it again, and then it would be like, right. Okay. Um, that. But I believe me, on the team I mentioned to you. I'm sure like, better than we're saying. <laughs> Vancouver is the worst. The worst? Of Winnipeg oh. and, and uh, Edmonton. And Not Montreal. worse. What? Well, I mean, you know, I think, again, we're probably overreacting to the loss of Markstrom and Tanev because they picked up Schmidt. So I think that's an upgrade. But they lost to Foley. So they have they really need another forward. And that could be the difference. Because I think Edmonton's super deep right now on forward and super deep on D. The problem is the goaltending, but it's not horrible, right? It's serviceable. It's tough. I don't know. Vancouver, you've got Holtby. You know, you got Demko's real good. I don't know. It's tough to say. I'll be honest with you. I go with Toronto, Montreal, Calgary, Edmonton, Winnipeg, Vancouver, and Ottawa. I just don't believe Montreal is going to be able to be better than Calgary or Edmonton. There's just way too many. Even though they added depth, they don't have the star power up the middle. I will they, tell you why. But the D is better. <laughs> I will tell you why. It's because... The season's going to be a lot of back-to-back -back games and three yeah. games and four nights. And yeah. Montreal have maybe one of the best duo team, uh, gold and tandem goaltender, and that division. And, and the seven team there, I believe they are the best. 
Yeah, I don't believe they they can't compete with the depth of Edmonton for sure. Like Edmonton's very deep right now on forward and D, and there's they, nobody has Drysaitel and McDavid except for maybe Toronto with Tavares, Marner, and Matthews, and and Montreal's nothing approaching that stratosphere. Um, Hellebuck is better than Montreal's goaltending, but they don't have a backup. So that could be a problem, but I don't think it's going to change things. I will tell you one reason why Edmonton won't struggle is because back-to-back -back games... They're not going to struggle. <laughs> they will struggle with Tabber, uh, with um, McDavid and Prescott oh, no. because they are the only two ones power that team all the time. Um, I don't think that's true because, I mean... They're, they the more you play those guys, the better they're gonna get. Like dry cycle particularly is like a horse. The more you play him, the better he gets. And I think I think that we're under like if you look at the moves they made, first of all, they have the best coach. They bring in Tyson Berry, they have Kyle Turris now, they have Cocoon, they brought back Bui Harvey. They have Yamamoto for a full season. Yes, they do lose cleft bomb, but what they have on D is like, you know, Caleb Jones is ready. Evan Bouchard looks ready. Broberg looked ready. I mean, they're, they're going to be really tough to deal with. And I don't think it's going to be like a two-man show next year. And I don't think it really was this show. Like they had depth. I mean, if you look at what team has dry settle McDavid, Nugent Hopkins, down the middle potentially like you can play Nugent Hopkins at center, which he probably is better at. And then they brought in tourists who can, you know, he can still produce enough at third line. They're pretty deep here. I don't, I don't love the goaltending, but it's not horrible. I mean, their goaltenders were like nine were, you know, nine seventeen save percentage and nine Oh two. So you don't like Mike Smith's save percentage, but he's still on 2.95 and he won seven more games than he lost. And then Koskinen's a pretty damn good goalie. I think he's like, you know, 2.75 and 9.17 save percentage. It's pretty good. I mean, I think they're hard to beat. I mean, Yamamoto looks like he's playing a game now. You got Neil, you brought back Huya Harvey, and then you suddenly have a third line. <laughs> they, I don't think they really had a third line before. I mean, I know the cleft bond thing hurts, but that should be even with – Tyson Berry probably. He's a little better defensively, but yeah, but five versus five, he struggled. They have a lot of really good D that, like Nurse is very good. Ethan Bears got to improve defensively a little bit, but he's good enough to chew up eighteen minutes. You got Larson who can chew up big minutes. You've got um, Bouchard's ready. I think they're going to have a hard time keeping Bouchard off that roster. Um, Jones is ready. Broberg looked really good. <laughs> if he's not in the, Philip Broberg, their first pick played in the playoffs. He looked really good. He's like six foot three, can skate. He was really good. They're looking pretty smart on that pick. I think about was I don't, I don't see them struggling at all, though. And then they got Chris Russell on top of it. He can chew he up can a lot of minutes. You still have not that, that, you know, top five team in NHL because their D is not strong and they have no goalies, really. No, they have they have no they have average goaltending. But why am I getting revert? They have average goaltending, but they have very strong D. I mean, their D is is. I mean, Nurse is a legit number two now. Bear looks like he's a number four. And then you've got Larson, probably also a number four. You know, they don't they need a number one. But, you know, Bouchard's good. He's a big guy that can shoot the puck. Yeah, he's good, but he, ne he never make it yet. He's 20. You look at what he's doing in the... That's my point. Like, he's, what he's, doing he's, doing. He's, not, he's not going to be a top two defenseman this oh, year. He will be. If you look at him overseas right now, he's like, he's really good. He's a point of game. I'm, I think not, I'm not sorry yet on the defenseman yet. Um, I don't, I'm not so like, 
Well, there's definitely, I'm not sold on any of Montreal's forwards, aside from their centermen are not ready. I mean, I'm not compared with Montreal, I'm compared with the rest of the defense. Oh, you're ranking Montreal ahead of Edmonton. I have Toronto is in front. Toronto have more the better defensemen to, to Edmonton. That's why Toronto's first. <laughs> Calgary have great defensemen over there. I don't know. I think they're they're pretty good, yeah. I don't know if they're great. They have one I, great defenseman. I think only like Winnipeg have less. I think Vancouver have better defensemen. For sure. Use. But I think Vancouver lost. I think it's a question about, you know, as long as Demko is what we think, then he's, they're fine. They'll be competitive. And they got a great player in Peterson. That's why I think yeah. all the teams are ahead of Montreal. I just don't see Suzuki and Kokinemi leading things yet. And I'm not sure Anderson will come back the way we want. I hope so, because I like Anderson. But Toffoli will produce, but he's not like a dynamic, game-breaking guy usually. He's just going to be consistent. And he'll score goals. Talking about recruits, if you turn on that, what's going on around the <laughs> everywhere. We have um, – the funny thing is – Remember the pick of everybody was laughing about Columbus Blue Jackets? Which one? Their first around, their first pick in, uh, I think it was uh, the Russian kids, Igor Chienekov or something like that. Yeah, nobody knew who he was, but he sounds like he's pretty good. He was like, he was rated in the fourth or fifth round, wasn't he? I mean, mean, right now with the kids, yeah. Yeah, I know. But how many times, we said this before, we're like, how many times is Columbus like we're like Ms. Lurkins? What is that? Oh wait, we trade we let Bobrovsky go. Ms. Lurkins really good. <laughs> Corpus, Corpus, what? <laughs> yeah, nobody like you know what I mean like nobody <laughs> talk about him. And then finally, uh, Chinakov is Chinakov. Yeah, as the name of him. Honestly, yeah, he was the number one pick. Was the number twenty one? He has. He's a nineteen years old. He scored fifteen points so far. And 27 game for the Alms in a KHL. Wow. Eight goals, seven assists. Good for him. That's awesome. That give you an idea what, you know what I mean? Like uh, maybe it could be like a, a seal at some point. Oh, you, you know, like we look at that draft history of Columbus. They always find somebody. And you're like, who is this guy? <laughs> yeah. Like Liam Foudy, people were like, why are you picking Liam Foudy so high? Liam Foudy in some games in the playoffs look like their best player. Um, they picked in the second round in 2017 this guy from France. Do you know who that is? And they're like, they're like, France? Alex Tessier. You watch this guy, you're like, oh my God, I love this guy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're really, I mean, even the Pierre, Pierre Luc Dubois was only 2016. And everyone was like, Pui Harvey, Pui Harvey, he's like, nah. Yeah, because he was, yeah, that, that, yeah, that Ravdi was not expect him to be there. Nobody saw that, <laughs> but they were right. Yeah, so right. Yeah, yeah, so right. So uh, we're right. thinking about that one over there. Um, you know, so um, a couple of things going going happen the next couple of weeks because some players have to figure out what they're going to do after if they start or not. You know what I mean? Yeah, the NHL and the ECHL, and everything like that. So, um, I think uh, we'd be really interesting about that one over there. So, um, I don't know, it's a couple of things about that. If we have a couple of things very quickly, we can um, remember um, Sparks, Garrett Sparks. Where is he now? Just signed uh, yesterday, announced an agreement with the ECHL, the Orlando Sala Bears. I thought he was going to be decent. I don't know. He um he had a big he had a lot of confidence. He played some good games for the Leafs. Um, Mike Babcock did not like him, and he was probably right. <laughs> I, I would just be nice to you. I would just be nice here because I had the, I had the in, I had the in very well about him. Yeah, what's the dope? Because he seemed like a weird dude. <laughs> so the in, I would just said to you. Um, he was not a nice guy. 
No, the, he wasn't. He was yeah, like, the only thing I can tell you, and I don't want to yeah, use it, it was, but he was not a nice guy from what I heard. Well, do you remember when he got demoted just before the playoffs? Yeah. Yeah, and he, I think he's just a very selfish guy, and he's like very caustic. <clears throat> and they, I think Babka's like, see ya. And they brought up, did they bring up Hutchison, I think? Is that who they brought up? Yeah. Possible. Like, bye bye. See you later. Go back to go across the street to the Marlies. <laughs> and then yeah. he got traded to Vegas, right? But he thought he was going to be the number one. <laughs> I know. Very interesting about him, honestly. The weird guy, I guess. But he's a uh, goalie. Sometimes you. A uh... couple of news around the league. Uh, the Minnesota Wild players continue to arrive in town and they have to be in quarantine. For 14 days so we are back now victor rask we have nico sturm and nick bonino and brad hunt are returning with the minnesota and they are going to skate with the team but they have to wait for the the 14 days before they get back over there the columbus blue jacket real reopened their facilities and they are ready to go back on the ice after a few players got testing with positive um I think a couple of days ago i think it was at the end of the week so if i can remember if i can remember could be right right we talked about this last week but i'm not sure exactly the, the same you know uh we know vegas and columbus have a couple of player with positive last week so we'll see what happened over there finally the detroit red wings um the coach um jeff blast shill excited about the upcoming season think the team have more depth like they never have before with bobby ryan that's his lab and and he's they are concerned about evany chevnikov he's not longer waiver exempt who current, uh, oh, Chevnikov? yeah they gotta play him like why are you signing sam gagne why are you signing these guys let he's not guarantee a spot he will be competing with others he 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 can play, man. You can play him on any line. <laughs> you can play him on the top line if you want. On the good news, the Philip Sandina do very well on the Czech League. He's uh, so good, Pierre. <laughs> I will believe me. Um, I don't. I, I don't compare him like Shemnika for Carolina. No, but I think he had that con. He can. I believe honestly, he, he have he has the tools, Michael, to score twenty five goals to thirty goals in the next two years. Not even like right away. Like he had, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, it's just he, depend what Detroit is going to use him and all that. But yes, I agree. That's yeah. the problem. But if they play him, the guy had eight goals in twenty six games. Yeah, that's twenty four goals. Yeah, no, you're yeah, right about that. If you I, watch him, like you go, holy crap! He's a fa he's he's as fast as Larkin. I agree with you he about does that. Things with his hands that Larkin doesn't, and he finds space. Larkin's like this, right? <laughs> and him, he goes, boom, and he no. comes back. And all of a sudden, there's all this room, and he goes to his little dot, boom. And on the power play, on that dot, he's like lethal. <laughs> and finally, on the defensive side, uh, the coach is a little bit concerned about the health of Danny DeGesser about after his injury, uh, about his surgery, about the thing was the back, if I can yeah. remember, yeah. right? Yeah. And finally, he's excited about the additioning uh, players like uh, Mark Starr, John Merrill. I think John Merrill is underrated um, in the NHL. Absolutely. I could be wrong, but I, I, really, I really believe I like that guy. Um, who was talking? We talked about who yesterday was missing a, of Winnipeg, the, like a defense five or six, something like that. You know what I mean? Oh, he's maybe not Vancouver, yeah. uh, Winnipeg, but I think Merrill is a type that players can be that kind of defenseman. You Absolutely. And he's inexpensive. He, yeah. So last year they signed Patrick Nemeth, and he was like three million bucks. And they moved on from Erickson finally, and you know they got rid of Bowie in the offseason, all these experiments. Nemeth was like their second best D all year. And you realize, oh no, this guy's an NHL defenseman. <laughs> he can skate. He's six foot three. He's a prototypical Iserman D. He's big and he can skate. And Merrill's the same. Merrill's six foot three. He can skate. He's not going to get you offense, 
but he's definitely not going to give up any defense. And you like, like him. That's a good pick. Like, yep. You pick up for 700 grand. Like, I agree with you. Plus, you know, they got also um, Troy. Uh, Stetcher. Stetcher. I think that's underrated. We're going to find out. But yeah, we, we watched him in the playoffs. <clears throat> I think you had the similar reaction. Like, who is that guy? And he looks like a Tory Crew type of D. Now, I don't know if he's going to be able to get the numbers, but he's small, he's stout, and he can skate, and he moves the puck really well. Definitely. Definitely. So uh, we'll see. We just did around the league. Is it time now to Michael Devalano Quiz? We are back today for another couple of questions about NHL flashback. And Michael is always on the hot seat for quiz. So let's start today, see what Michael's going to get there or well, not. But we know already the first one will be easy for you. Honestly, uh, you already, I'm sure you get this one, but easy one. 1996, he became the first history player to reach 3,000 points in regular season and the playoff. Gretzky. <laughs> and now I will ask you which team? Rangers. Yeah. <laughs> we got it. We got it. Now we go back in 1970. <clears throat> the score is 1,000 points in uh, NHL with the Chicago Blackhawks. 1,000 points in 1970? Bobby Hull? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it. Question number three. Born then. <laughs> Question number three. He scored his 900 career point in 1995 with the Calgary Flames. Jerome Aginla? No. no 1985. That wouldn't have been right. Um, who would have had 900 career points by that point for Calgary? Maybe New Day? No, that would have been early too. Right, I will give you the second answer on that one. Right, he came from the Buffalo Sabers. To Calgary? Yep. Who would have come from Buffalo? Ooh. I know, it's a tough one. That's why I give you that one because it's a weird one. I don't know. Yeah. Who moved? So, what year was it? 1995. 95. And he came from Buffalo. I mean, it's not Mike Pekka. Who would have come in 95 to Buffalo? 900 points. God, I don't know who that. I mean, <laughs> I don't know. You like? <laughs> yeah, I don't know who that is. Phil Osley. Oh, that's right. That terrible trade. I know. It's a tough one, that one. It wasn't easy. Yeah, I totally forgot he played in Calgary. Let's move on to 1988. This player like for the Los Angeles King earns eight points in one game. Who is he? Bernie Nichols? <laughs> <laughs> Got it. You nailed this one. I was so on that one over there. I forgot about Housley. <laughs> I know. Um, let me move on to the next one here. I'm coming down here. All right. And and on the day today in 2009, this coach reached his 500 win in his career. 2009. 2009. 500 wins. Yeah. Yeah. Not many people win 500. So I don't want to give you the name of the team yet. Still active? Yes. That's a good question. <clears throat> so that's like 11 years ago. Holy crap. Um, they would have had to been... I mean, I want to say, like, I might be wrong, though. Elaine Vigneault, but he probably would have been later than that. I think that would have been later. Um, I mean, Joel Quenville, maybe? But that's still late. Is that right? He coached in St. Louis, right? He was with Chicago. But he was with St. Louis before that. So he got all yeah. those. That's why. Yeah. Exactly. 
So it was like one there where, you know what I mean? Like, um, wow. it was a good one over there. How many wins does he have to date? He must have another four or 500. Um, you know what? You may be right. Maybe right. I don't have it in front of me right now, but you're absolutely right. Um, and the last one, this rookie players with Arizona Coyotes score back to back goal and short and dead and, and 58 seconds apart in the second period. Who is he last year? Uh, 2014. Oh, 14. A rookie. Yep. Who would have been a rookie in 14? He still play yeah. maybe with them, but he's still in the NHL. He could be with still with them, but he's an NHL. Um, 2014, that's such a weird time for them. Um, and he scored back-to-back -back shorthanded goals? Yep. And 58 seconds. Jeez. I'm trying to think of one. Six one. years ago, he'd probably be at least 28. Jeez, I don't know. That's a weird one. I mean, Clayton Keller's too young. I don't know. <laughs> too late. Thomas, Thomas Reader. Oh, Toby Reader. Yep. Wow, he's never scored a goal since. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he had one goal in Edmonton or zero goals, remember? He had like 50 games and no goals. <laughs> exactly. That's the one where he's doing that. Uh, just the last one would be more easier. Uh, he became uh, the first player in the history of the Minnesota Wild play 1,000 game in 2019, get his 700 assists in the first period on the goal by Kevin Fiala, who is E. Koivu? We need to finish on the on the positive nut today, so we give you that easy question over there. But yeah, very good one today again. You get the, you know, four good two two, but one, two the, the two one was very hard. And the first one it was about who was again the first one you missed. Well, Housley, I totally met, forgot he was in Calgary. Yeah, Phil Housley was not easy one, honestly. You know, when the question is about the 900 point, but we always thinking about the Calgary Flame players, right? You talk about players. That's what I was going through my head. I'm like, yeah, long time over there. So, um, but you see, know. he didn't go directly from Buffalo to. That's probably the other thing. He was in Winnipeg, right? Because he got traded for Dale Howardchuk. Yes, that's that's what I was like, and he got traded for a bucket of pucks, like. He got traded for Kale Hughes, Jocelyn Lemieux, the other Lemieux, and Tommy Abilene. I guess Tommy Abilene was a pretty good D, but none of them. He became the leading scorer, I think, in Calgary that one year, right? Yeah, he played three seasons at Winnipeg, then he won two years. Then he went to New Jersey, Washington, and come back to Calgary. He was um, – oh, that's right. He did come back. Look at that. And he finished with which team? Toronto, didn't he? It was like very brief. It was like a game one break. game with Toronto. <laughs> yeah, that's what because he got hurt, didn't he? Like right away. Yeah, because he was straight in the middle of the season with from Chicago again. Um, for that part of it, it's amazing when you think about Phil Osling. I was thinking only one team, me Buffalo. Yeah, well, he was. I mean, he had great years in Buffalo. But you're right; he played a lot. I remember the, the like the Winnipeg days because he got traded for Dale Howardchuk. But he, he have a lot of good year with Winnipeg. He got like 86.97 oh, yeah. points. Oh, After for that, sure. He never been, never. Like, he never been the same players over there. It's funny. He, he come sometime with a, one team. Um, look, he went to St. Louis for 26 games. Then he went to New Jersey for 22 games. And then he finished with Toronto for one game. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he played those three teams for not a full season. So imagine this. Winnipeg had T. Mussolini score 76 goals that one year. He had 97 points and was a minus 14. Yeah, he, he was a little bit like a, an Eric Carlson <laughs> 1.0. <laughs> <What? laughs> you had 97 points. How can you be on the for 111 again? And then 
they were only three games above 500. <laughs> 40 wins, 37 losses. <laughs> You're like, what? That's remind me a little bit what uh, Ovenskin the year before uh -huh. um, Barry Trotz show up at Washington. I think he finished with 48 goals. He had minus 47. It, I mean, that was brutal. The, um, but the goalie is why. Because he had he had Bob Essenza. And we yeah. know that when Bob Essenza, he got traded to um, Detroit. And that lasted very, 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 very little. <laughs> it was like, whoa, this guy's bad. <laughs> I know. I know. You have to write about that one over there. So, um but it's time now to go with the last team on the 31, 31, 31 days and 31 different team. And we have to finish with Vegas Golden Knight. We apologize. We should put Vegas at some point between the L or between with the V, but we yeah, decided well, to go all the way to the end with them. And honestly, um, if you have money, they are looking for some money for the salary cap space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well... I mean, these, they, you know, they got a very rich expansion draft and they've just capitalized on it over and over. So I think that that expansion draft continues to pay dividends. We saw some interesting things just on the front office last year, which is you saw George McPhee step back and give Kelly McCrimmon the GM role. And Kelly McCrimmon's a veteran from the WHL, like, really sharp hop, hockey mind. And I think he gets along very well with George McPhee and they work very well together. Um, they also made an odd move, which I was a little surprised at, which is they move, you know, they removed Gerard Gallant, who's had nothing but success with this team. And they bring in Pete DeBoer after he gets let go by San Jose. Um, so shout out to Pete and Steve spot, like good for them, you know, they grab a great team. They upgrade over probably San Jose uh, the other odd move that surprised everyone is when they traded and brought in Robin Leonard and then Leonard took over the number one. So I think they have a very good pulse for what's actually going on in their lineup and they're not afraid to move on it. We've also seen them be very aggressive about moving out picks that they had stockpiled. But, you know, what's funny is they still have a lot of like high-end talent that they can draw on. So we see Peter's, uh, Paul Stasny, not Peter, but Paul Stasny move out back to Winnipeg we see the mate move out Nate Schmidt to bring in the whale, which is Alex Peter Angelo. I will never for the life of me understand what St. Louis was thinking. They should have given Peter Angelo all the money that he asked for because what he got in Vegas was pretty reasonable as far as I'm concerned. To your point, they're right up against the salary cap. The reality is they have a lot of money. I mean, they are the fifth richest team in the NHL after only being in it for like four years, five years. Um, and they still have really high-end prospects. They still have Cody Glass, who, if he's healthy, is going to play second-line center for them next year. The kid is like, we saw him in the rookie camp in, in Anaheim here last year, and it was like, whoa, this guy is – we've always known he's good because we played against him in the WHL, but this guy is better than anybody on the ice. He's, you know, not the – he's a little bit soft, but he's so talented. Like, he's just got elite level everything. Peyton Krebs. They draft Peyton Krebs, who falls in the draft because he had Achilles surgery. If you know Peyton Krebs, he ain't going to be held back. This guy's got – he's a tip, prototypical Vegas Golden Knight in that he can score, set up players, but he's got that grit that defies his size. Because he's not a big guy. Like, if you see him, he's pretty lean and he's not that tall. It doesn't matter. He's got, like, that extra thing that goes on. So he fits in very well. And then they have Nicholas Hag, whose name I probably spelled incorrectly here. But uh, let's see. Does that look right? Oh, not that. Yes, yes, you're good. That looks better. So, and, you know, people don't really – so their first ever draft, which we'll look at, we know that they drafted Cody Glass, Brandstrom, Suzuki, and then the second round, Nick Hag. And I was very surprised that Nick Hague fell to the second round, but I think we just knew he's a six foot seven defenseman that can contribute offensively. He's more of a you know an outlet pass setup guy than he is a big shot. He probably could work on his shot, but I mean to get a defenseman like that, it's very hard to find, right? Like you you could project him easily being not just a top four, but maybe a top two. So I think he just needed time and he looks very good. 
So suddenly, you know, like in spite of all the veterans, they bring in Mark Stone and all these guys. This remains a very deep team. Now, do I believe in this team? There's something that's missing in my brain about the team, but you know, it's, I just feel like they don't have the star power down the middle. William Carlson has far exceeded any of our expectations. We know he had the one really big year, but he's probably fallen back to earth to kind of being the 20, 22 goal scorer that he is. But we know he's very good on faceoffs. He can kill penalties. He's a great two-way player. So maybe he's like a little underrated. We know Riley Smith has got big numbers last year again. And he's kind of like a year on, year off type guy, but he's very fast and he can score goals. So he got 27 goals last year, probably would have got 30. He's probably going to settle down to 2024 20, again because we see he kind of goes a little bit up and down. March or so, like, wouldn't you love to have him in Florida still? <laughs> I mean, the guy scores, what, 30 goals in Florida and they let him go in the expansion draft. You remember he was he was with Tampa? Yeah, and Columbus, wasn't he? So with Tampa, imagine if he was still with Tampa. <laughs> no, it's like he's... He's one of those guys, like, he was in Columbus, he was in Tampa, he was in Florida, and I think people just didn't appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, I, I don't want to compare him because he has, is a Hall of Fame, but he has a little bit the same story like Martin St. Louis. I think that's a really good comparison yeah, because he's a smaller guy, highly talented. He, he's um, – if you look at 30 goals, 27 goals, 25 goals, 22 goals. So he's, like – he didn't get to the NHL until he's 25, 26. Can you put the bigger your, um, your screen? Uh, let's try. No more. Yep. A little bit better. Yep. That's good. So you're right. Like he doesn't make the NHL until he's 25, 26. He bounces around a bunch, just like Martin St. Louis was discarded by Calgary. And then all of a sudden he's like the, you know, he's a top offensive player. Now St. Louis, to your point, was late, but then he became, you know, the leading scorer in the NHL. St. Louis was like a tank. Um, so he's a little built differently, but man, like a good comparison, I think. Um, Max Paxaretti, we know all he does is just score goals around the net. Like the guy scored 30 some odd goals last year, get 33, I think. So they've got offense. Cody Glass is the most talented of any of these guys. Now, the problem with Cody Glass might be maturity, but it's not going to hamper him. He's just on the ice, he's super smart. He's calculating. He's got good reach. He can shoot the puck. He can make passes to tape. So you got to think if they play him with any wingers, whether it's Marchezo, Mac Pax, or Eddie Stone, he's going to get points. Um, we saw him in the AHL. He got hurt. But before that, he's just really, really good. He's, he's too good to be in the AHL. Mark Stone, we know, is not the most beautiful skater, but he's probably a top 15 player in the NHL. Now, he's getting up there. But – my, you know, he produces points. He's very consistent. He's creating the power play. He's a big body, like definitely a leader on this team. Then you go down to the third line, you got Alex Tuck. They signed Chandler Stevenson, so I suspect this is a player we don't understand and appreciate yet. Uh, Nick Waugh was a steal from Carolina, in my opinion, just the way Julian Gauthier was a steal from Carolina. Like, you have these two big power players that just needed time, and we watch him, and, man, he looks really good. The way – like, when he played for Team Canada, I'm like, holy crow, how are people not paying attention to this guy? So as much as we used to discriminate against small players, I think we're discriminating against really big players because he's like 6'4", six, 6'5", six, but he has good skill level and speed, and he can shoot the puck, and he can set up guys, and he can kill penalties. So he's the worst case going to be a third-line player for this team. Here. Thomas Nosek's not going to get you points. Will Carrier's tough and two-way player. We know Ryan Reeves is scary. So, I mean, they've got guys in the right roles and the right chairs. And then they've still got Peyton Krebs in the wings. And I think you're going to have a hard time keeping Peyton Krebs off of this roster. So that might be a bonus. Um, on D, like, this is the story. You know that Shea Theodore emerges in number one. And then you stack Alex Peter Angelo on top of that. <laughs> And you, you and you resign, like you brought in Alec Martinez. We didn't realize how good he was. He gets into Vegas. You go, whoa, he's a legit number three, four. Braden McNabb is up there. White Cloud, this guy looks like. Where did he come from? Like he was a, the surprise of the NH uh, of the playoff. You know, I mean, we know what Theodore did. Like, you know, what I mean, like he was maybe one of the yeah. MVP, but. 
at the end of the day, if you think about those six players there, I think he's the one with white cloud went no, from nowhere. Like he's came from nowhere. Like we, we saw him again in Anaheim. Yeah. And in the rookie tournament. And I was like, ooh, this guy's pretty good. And then you saw him play in the HL, you're like, mm, he's pretty good there too. And then he came to the NHL, you're like, oh, he's still pretty good. <laughs> so I, I think he's got some upside. We're gonna find out. Can he produce offensively? But he's definitely a you know a really good defenseman. And then the Robin Leonard flurry is like maybe it's too expensive, but they can afford it. So they're not crying too much. They probably have the best tandem in the league. Maybe I like who's got a better tandem right now. No, here's the point we said to you. They are over uh, by um, almost nine hundred thousand dollars over. So they have to cut one defenseman on the do, on the yeah. on the assist. I think. Well, they, is... I think Olden will be the one here because um, what well, the problem because Olden is one point seven million versus this eight hundred from Dax Dax yeah. uh, from that would be the one over there. Otherwise. They cannot cut. They cannot cut anybody. You have twelve forward, and they have only yeah. twenty-one on the roster versus twenty-three. Now, I mean, the logical move would be to move Flurry, but he's refusing to move, and they they think they'll just keep him for a year. Does Dahlstrom not get them over? I guess they're still over without him. Who? Dahlstrom. Carl Dahlstrom is eight fifty. Yeah, that's the only one they can keep because right now, oh, they what what without oh, him, I see much money. Okay. Right, right. Maybe you know you might be right because they could probably get that for seven, eight hundred thousand. Like the same player, right? Yep. Yeah, but you could see where they they kind of pay some of these guys a little too much. Maybe like Carrier at one four, Stevenson at two seven five, Holden at one seven. Like Holden, Holden is good. Don't, don't get me wrong. He's a top six. He's a big guy and he can shoot the puck a little bit. But he's he's not young, you know. I could see where they probably move out Holden. I get Holden confused with McNabb a lot, but because they're very similar, right? But McNabb yeah. would be a lot better. But again, Holden is okay. I have a 1.7 Michael. When you have a, a you know, your salary cap is not like too, you know what I mean? Like yeah, I agree. He said, but because I think 1.7 for him is pretty good, and yep. McNabb at 2.5 that's pretty good. But yes, the other at four five, um, and pretty little. The, the only thing I would say to you, like, you know, move out Flurry. I know, but he don't. He won't move. No, no. But if you move out Flurry, right, that give them a chance to pick up another forward for sure. Center where at three million dollars pick up those. I believe I I'll have, if Glass stay healthy, they have yeah. no problem. But I, I think agree. it would be good to get another three great center. I, I don't have nobody in my mind right now, but. A good solid one over there, like Lars Eller, example. That's what I'm talking about. I might be, yeah, maybe. No, I'm not said. No, I'm talking about. I'm, like that, like, I'm, like talking about Saturday, I'm not compared. Yeah. But Eller play a lot of roles. Washington, what nobody do over there because they are offensive player in front of him, and he he's really want to play second line, and but he's a more like a third line in NHL. Yeah, but yeah he's, he's, the player I'm talking about. You know what I mean? I agree. I mean, they need a Stasny without the salary. <laughs> yeah. You know what? I'll, I'll be surprised. I mean, you know, he's been save over there. But a third line like this, I think a Tyler Bozak over there can fit there. Yeah, they'd have to – the money is a problem, obviously. I know, I know. So that's, I'm just mentioning the name right there that's in front right? of my mind. But I think that kind of player you're looking, 33, 31, 32, can make about 30 points, 40 points. Sit down at the third one. You need something at the end. You can pick it up. This guy, if you do like that, you know what I mean. So, so but again, I think the only thing right there is the salary with Flurry at the goalie. Otherwise, you know what I mean. Like Crazy. you don't need six defensemen. They need four. It's seven million for a backup. You know what I mean. They don't need defensemen. The Perinjalu do defense one and two. Oh my god! Yeah. He's like gonna be play twenty seven minutes a game or something. Yeah. So you don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah but, now, now they have only 12 forward and they have 21 roster i would like you to come back now not on the rookies but on the no roster forward they have 16 player there as a forward which one do you believe do you think they could be 
close so they could make the NHL, they be a part of their well, roster. Oh, yeah, I did spell it right. Okay, never mind. Let's fix this. This guy is going to yeah, be in the NHL. Part. Right? Like, I don't see why Nicholas Hag is Nicholas Hag right now is 791 and he's better than Holden. So I think that's an obvious one where you move out Holden, like you said, and you bring in Nick Hag. Peyton Krebs, to me, you're going to have a very, very hard time keeping him off your roster. I don't see it happening. I think he's going to play in the NHL. Maybe they take their time with him, but he's going to make it very difficult. He's recovered from the Achilles injury. He's way too good for the WHL, and he's going to be too good for the AHL if the AHL happens. That guy could be your surprise. Where he comes in, he can come in and play third line, but you're not going to want him on the third line. Like he's super talented. So if if Cody Glass falters at all, you got Peyton Krebs that is right at the similar level. He doesn't have this. He's not as dynamic, but he's smart and he's like always on, always on the puck, always where it's going to be, getting it to where it has to go, and he'll score your goals. So I, that kid's going to be hard. I don't know if it's this year or next year, but, man, I think it's now probably because they're not going to send him back to the WHL, and they're not going to want him. He's going to play maybe in the AHL if there's an AHL season, but not for long. He's going to be just too good for that. Um, I don't. I think Jake Lashishan is probably the only guy that I, – I think he's going to have to carve out a bottom six career for himself if he's going to play, and that might be to their advantage. Because he's not the goal scorer they thought, and he doesn't have the speed. But he's a thick kid, and he can, you know, he's he can play a little bit rough, and he's cheap, obviously. So th those might be two guys. But I, def I think definitely it's going to be impossible to keep Hag in the AHL again. This goalie, by the way, is not bad. <laughs> Which one? The, the, uh, Yuri Patera. Yeah. Yeah, they're interesting, aren't they? Uh, I think what we mentioned earlier, you know what I mean? They are like, you have to find a space right now. That's the only thing they have to work. The That's good thing about that also, they have still have seven round pick next next year, two on second round, one from the New Jersey Devils and one from uh, their own on uh, the second round, and they have their first round pick over there. And, you know, if you think about the draft pick, I don't know if you are there right now. I'm on my page myself. I don't yeah, see I'm on the draft there. pick. I'm sorry about that. I did not see your page, but I think you know the first right, the first time they hit the nails. Like one thing they did well, they pick up a lot of the pick num uh, round pick number one because they will maybe tell to uh, one team you keep that players. We don't want to take him, but we get your first round pick. So they yeah. did well when you think about that. Unfortunately, two of them don't play with it with them and I think they do very well. Nick Suzuki with Montreal now and Eric Bar uh, Brandstrom is with Ottawa if I can yeah. recall it. So, but again, their first four pick was amazing. Um, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, because that's that's pretty amazing. If you can go now for the 218, they don't have no first round pick. Morozov is in a KHL right now. He is not like, but again, we'll be surprised if he does something there. I do not see anybody else right now on the draft to it, uh, 18, what is very great. But I expect a lot from Peyton Grebs. I could be wrong. Maybe no, talk mean. about him. That's what I'm saying. Peyton Krebs, you're going to have a hard time keeping him off the roster. Because Peyton Krebs, like I showed this here, so you can see Peyton Krebs. 60 points in 38 games. He's too good to go back to the AH or to the WHL. He's gonna not, he might start in the AHL if there's an AHL season. But I mean, if, if that's why I say if Cody Glass falters, Peyton Krebs will be the guy to step in because he's he's very close to that level. He's maybe not as dynamic as Cody, but he's more mature and he's tougher mentally. Uh, you're absolutely right. I think you have something you can put apart, and then maybe you no, know, you know, Sevenson at two point five. I think you one point seven or two point five, and he's at two point five. So you know, what I mean, they can pick it up there, a guy like them, or cool. you can drop down like old yeah. and keep a thirteen forward there with Krebs around there. That's really that's a really good uh, statement here about that. That that's why I was saying before, like Peyton Krebs, maybe Lashishan. And definitely Hag. Like those are guys that are going to take more expensive roster spots, and they'll be okay. 
Yep. That's a good one over there. I think they are, you know, but at the other day we mentioned, I mentioned this yesterday and, you know, I'm, I'm sure you agree. They are maybe at definitely the top five best NHL team for the upcoming season, maybe three, and maybe they have a chance to win the Stanley Cup. Um, when you have pretty in Jello in your team, that's uh, that increase your chance to win. And, you know, we have to give a, you know, I did not like the fact what they did to Gerald Gallant to put him out to Peter, yeah. to bring Peter the board. But yeah. you have to give credit to the board, the board yeah. because he's a great hockey yeah. coach. You have to give him credit. Uh, you know, I mean, you have a big rivalry between San Jose and um, Vegas the yeah. year prior and we tried that and the board came back there and then you know people was thinking why do you do that why not to keep getting after uh di not a difficult beginning season if there was plus four on the on the um, plus four win on the 500 so Gannon was not bad at all he's just like they want to chin and then mccrimmon won maybe his own men and that's what he did that he's not McRimmon is a recognized as a manager. He's not scared to make trade. He's not scared to make change. And um, that's his reputation. I could be wrong, yeah. but I'm sure you oh, know. Yeah, he's super aggressive. So Yeah, so I think that's a good thing about that one over there. So um, that finalized our 31-31. I just want to mention before we shut down here, uh, you did an amazing job, Michael, to bring team. I, honestly, the credit go to you because, honestly, I'm just like, uh, I just – talking to you about what you did and everything. So great, great job about that one over there. Like we mentioned earlier this morning, we're going to sh uh, shift to the now another 31-31, but now it's going to be a part, the team number 32, the Seattle, is it Kraken again? Yeah, Kraken. Release and, Kraken. and now we're going to see team by team who is going to be Pratek. Um, the rules, if you, I can be wrong, but it's a 10 players uh rules like you can mix like uh six and four or seven and three and right. one goalie no it's four and four so again it's four and four so if you protect four defensemen you can only protect four forwards if you protect seven forwards you can you can only protect three d that's why it's so rich <laughs> it's a minimum of three d that's what i'm saying it's you can have seven forwards and three D, or you can have four forwards and four D. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But still have one goalie to protect. One goalie. And then you have the rules about no protection. Like some players can be the rookies can be out like a uh, no no waiver or whatever they call it. Like the is it entry level contract that's excluded? Yeah, or? the entry level contract, and I think you can play one year. And in it, shall I could have to check this rule? I can bring to you guys tomorrow about that one over there um, for the protection for the rookie season or something like that. Um, so um, would be very interesting. We're going to start tomorrow with Anaheim. So we're going to look at the players that they can expose, right? Yeah. So you have to said we need to decide who is going to be protect. Okay. Well, to right. go through that list. So the list, the list, and then we go there like. Goalie example like John Gil Gibson over there would be protect example, right? <laughs> so you have to go all the way like that. So you have team is going to struggle. Something will be easy. Uh in some team they don't have no worry because they're rookies. And I think it's one year you don't have no or you have an entry level contract also like on your three season, I think you you have no problem to get there. Does that make sense? Yep. Hey so, Pierre, uh, jump unfortunately. Yep. So um, thanks again, everybody, for another great program today. We look forward to see you tomorrow at 11 o'clock Eastern Time. Have a great Tuesday, everybody. Thank you, Pierre. Thank you, everybody.